For the Emperor and Sanguinius, we painted an awesome Flesh Terrors army. This army was painted by James, one of the artists here at Siege, and it comprises of loads of awesome infantry Primaris units, including some Blade Guard, Eliminators, Heavy Intercessors, Assault Intercessors, Norman Intercessors, Hell Blasters, some Burstborn Marines, and also a selection of characters to lead it. So let's jump in and have a look at this Flesh Terrors army. I'm gonna try my hardest to dilute the bias to this project. As anyone who knows, I'm a big fan of anything that comes from the Blood Angels lineage. Um, this army is really, really impressive with regards to sort of like the iconic kind of black and maroon color scheme, which it has. Uh, and there's just loads of awesome little accents and details that are scattered across the miniatures, including some awesome characters, which, uh, which have got a little bit of work done to them as well. Um, so let's have a look at the aggressors to start off with. Um, now these are really, really awesome models, the aggressors, toting the Bolt Storm Gauntlets. Um, I do absolutely love the way that uh, that the sort of little tassels and things that are just on the front of the armor are done in this really nice kind of like emerald green. Obviously green and red being complementary colors, just having that lovely sort of rich, warm green sort of like thread there on that sort of uh, like belt tassel, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, and then you can see the really consistent sharp edge highlighting across all the individual sections of the armor of this marine as well. You can see the black shoulder pads. We've also got loads of flesh terror transfers on this force as well, uh, just to add that heraldry onto the miniatures. Uh, James has done a really nice job with just keeping the models super, super clean and consistent across all of the execution on the surfaces and details. Um, the other thing with the project is we've got this really nice sort of natural desaturated kind of gray uh, neutral tone base. Uh, again, with a splash of green with the, with the tufts, just again, add a complementary color on the base to just work with the miniature. Um, really, really lovely, lovely attention to detail on these models. Next, we've got the Eliminators uh, and every army or Marine army needs some snipers. And this one also has a set of them. Um, really, really well executed. We'll have a look at the sergeant from this uh, three-man unit here. Um, and again, just from the start, you can see that this sergeant's uh, looking for a target through that sort of like monocular, which is just awesome. I'll turn it around in a second and show you the really stunning camouflage pattern that's painted on the sort of cape. Uh, but you can see here all the purity seals with loads of text on them. Um, I really do love the sort of black gun casings on all the weaponry. You've got those really cold kind of highlights on there, which is just nice. You can see all the little sort of skulls across the details, like on the sort of ammo area here and on the gun done in that lovely gold color. Um, and you can see on the facial details, all fully painted on the face, really nice attention to detail on the face with the eyes and everything fully painted. Uh, catch lights and things on all the, the lenses and sort of the gems and things like that as well. Um, so let's turn it around. I've been teasing you for long enough at this awesome, awesome sort of urban camouflage, free-handed cloak. Uh, and all three of the eliminators have got this and it's just really sharply executed and really helps to kind of like tie that model into the sort of environment that they're set within. Uh, and that's that awesome camouflage cape that all three of the eliminators have got. So next, let's have a look at the Blade Guard from the army. And there are three of them in this force. I'm just going to pick up one of them here so you can have a look. Um, I do absolutely love Blade Guard. Again, what Flesh Tech army would not be complete without some close combat troops. And these are the best of the best when it comes to the Primaris faction, the Blade Guard. We've got uh, the uh, Storm Shield just maglocked onto the backpack. Uh, he's got his blade drawn. I love the fact that the power node on the blades is also done in this really vibrant lime colored kind of power node, which is just really nice. The subtle glow effect just around the node as well is just really finishes off that blade. You can see the really nice kind of like refraction of light on that steel blade there. You've got the lighter and darker and mid-tone areas that James has just really nicely executed across there. Uh, you can see all the consistent edge highlighting across every single aspect of the miniature. Um, and I do really like the, the use of kind of like more gray tones on the sort of hair and the moustache and stuff, just to really give that kind of aged look to this, uh, this, this Primaris Marine. Again, you can see every little bit of detail fully painted. The script on the purity cells is all done there. And you've got some really nice, like sort of desaturated green wax parts on the purity seals. Again, very good use of color theory there just to add interest to those specific details on the miniatures. And once again, we've got all of the transfers that have been applied to the miniatures. You've got the elite one here with that iconic blood drop just in the center of it. And we've got that sawtooth kind of cog um, uh, flesh terror symbol on the other on the other pauldron as well. Uh, that's just one of these awesome blade guard miniatures. 
Next, we're gonna have a look at the heavy intercessors from the force. There's five of them here. Um, a real solid key kind of like shooter unit for an army that does have a, a nice mix, even balance of kind of 50-50 shooting and 50-50 kind of close combat. Uh, we'll pull forward one of these awesome heavy intercessors so you can have a look. Again, really nicely executed. Uh, I, one of my favorite things about the Flesh Terror scheme in general is just the fact that you've got that lovely accent color of black on, on key details. So for example, we've got the gun casing, the pauldrons, the helmet, and also the backpack. And it really splits the color scheme nicely so that it makes it instantly recognizable and also iconic for the for the actual chapter. Um, as you can see, all the little dials and things on the van brace have all been painted. And again, a really nice contrasting green kind of hue, which is just really, really nice. I do like the splash of gold just on some of the aquilas and things. It kind of gives them a bit more value on the miniature um, and just shows a bit more of an ornate detail and how important that winged kind of skull or winged aquila actually is. Um, so if we turn around the back here, you'll see again a really nice demonstration of all the super sharp highlighting and consistent highlighting across every area of detail on the miniature, including metallics, armor, black, and all the other parts of the model. Uh, so that's just one of these awesome heavy intercessors. Now we're going to look at the real teeth of this uh, Flesh Terrors force in the Assault Intercessors. And there are two groups of five. Do really like an Assault Intercessor, especially for an army that's themed after close combat like the Flesh Terrors. We're going to have a look at the one here that's just thrumming a grenade in probably one of the most aggressive poses in the force, which I think is just absolutely brilliant. You've got the chainsaw and bolt pistol stowed away or maglock to the, his ceramite armor. And then he's just got a bandolier of grenades and just throwing them like a crazy, crazy man. Uh, so that's this awesome, awesome assault intercessor. Again, really good use of color and on certain details like the bandolier being in black to draw the eye to it away from the armor paneling. This guy's obviously got some bionics as well. Uh, so you've got obviously that lovely red kind of like ocular lens, which is quite cool. Again, you can see all the face, all the details, everything fully painted on him, uh, which is just absolutely great. But again, a really nice model. Now, one of the little things that I do like that we've done on this and that, that James is really great at doing is obviously adding all the details and adding life to them. You can see all the buttons and, and on the chainsaw here to activate it to maybe change the speed of the chainsaw and things like that are all painted. And again, in that desaturated complementary green, which just works really, really well with the miniature. Um, and again, you can see all those transfers, the assault transfers with that blood drop just applied to this model. And again, you've got that lovely flesh terrors chapter symbol just on the left pauldron that iconic toothed cog icon with a blood drop in the center uh, so yeah that's just one of these awesome assault intercessors so let's have a look at the other squad of assault intercessors are going to pull forward another one that's shooting um again really really great pose just a sort of advancing there ready to strike with the uh the chainsaw and you've got the bolt pistol just pulled forward as if he's about to take a shot got a nice rebreather kind of like muzzle thing on his face as well um, I'd, I'd probably just to, to abate and hold back the uh, the Black Rage potentially. Um, but yeah, really, really great, uh, great pose and great miniature. And again, James has done a really superb job uh, adding all the sharp highlights across all the armor paneling and details. You can see the striations there just on the top of the head as well for the uh, for the hair. So there's multiple stage highlights on the hair of this miniature as well. Um, not so great as like the Blade Guard. So this guy's perhaps a bit younger, um, but again, really, really cleanly executed. And again, you can see all of the details added on. You've got all the little parts on the chainsaw fully painted and highlighted we've got this um this serrated blade flesh terrors icon i kept calling it a cog but it but it uh, is more like a blade but let me know in the comments what you think it is whether it's a blade or a cog i keep dancing between the two um but then you've got again around the back here you can see every little part on the miniature fully and sharply highlighted so that's another one of the assault intercessors so one thing that this force does have, which I'm really glad to see, is some firstborn Space Marines. Again, with the launch of the Primaris range over the last seven or so years, um, we don't see as many of them. So it's really nice to see some of those in this army uh, and really kind of show that kind of lineage between the passing of the baton from firstborn to Primaris. So let's jump in and have a look at the two combat squads. Now I have to pick him up first because I do miss a good missile launcher in a tactical squad or an intercessor unit. And uh, here you can see the uh, the humble firstborn missile launcher uh, Astartes just taking a shot there with that um, that sort of like shoulder mounted uh, missile launcher. The one thing I do really love about this model is the fact that it has the auto loader on the backpack. So you've got that sort of bionic arm that just will grab around and place it into the missile launcher reverse, which is just great. Um, you can see all the buttons and little things on there fully painted again in that desaturated green, which is just really nice to complement the sort of uh, sort of the armor color. Um, again, red lenses done on the black uh, head as well or helmet, which again just works really well and it's a much sort of more vibrant richer red in the eye lenses as well which is just really nice you can see that all the targeting lenses on the front of the the missile launcher again painted in that lovely complementary green uh, so that's this missile launcher firstborn astartes really great to see him in the army 
So let's have a look at the other combat squad. And again, we've got another Marine here. Uh, and I'm gonna pick up one of the Bolters because it's really nice to see a Bolter wielding Space Marine uh, non-Primaris model once again. Uh, James has done a phenomenal job of just rendering the color scheme for this faction or this chapter across these miniatures. Um, again, just picking them out because I really do like the use of color on these. You've got that desaturated green there just on the purity seal with all the text and everything done on the parchment as well. Um, but just moving him around so you can see, even on a firstborn marine, which is smaller in scale than obviously the Primaris models, you've still got an exquisitely sharp and refined execution on these miniatures. And that's the other firstborn combat squad. So to back up the Assault Intercessors, we have got some normal Intercessors, which again, any Primaris army cannot go without. So let's pull forward one of these for you guys to have a look at. We're gonna have a look at the chap here that's just using his wrist-mounted sort of uh, computer screen to scan for targets. Uh, I do really love the, the posing of this miniature, kind of foot raised on a bit of, a bit of terrain, scanning for uh, obviously targets or enemies, for example. You just got the awesome details there, all fully painted on the face. Uh, this guy has a service stud as well, which has been picked out in a little bit of metal, which is great. You can see that sort of uh, mag-locked uh, helm just on the waist there as well. Again, with all the lenses and everything fully painted with catch lights and details and multiple sort of colours in the actual glass of the lens. Um, if we move around to the side, you can see the bolter here, and you've got the word tear written on that scroll, which is just awesome. Again, really nice to see the use of the chapter kind of uh, heraldry and also sort of wording spread across this force on these scrolls and banners. They've all got words that are appropriate to the flesh terrors. Um, chapter have a look at a bit of a top down there on that uh, on that wrist mounted computer screen you can see every little button all fully painted all the little lenses and dials and buttons and then on the screen you can see there as well all sort of highlighted with the uh, the green sort of vibrant colors just to show that it's got energy and power going within it uh, so that's just one of the intercessors from the combat squad so let's grab another intercessor just to show you consistency from the other units. Uh, we're going to pull forward one that's got the grenade launcher. Again, nice little auxiliary grenade launcher on this chap as well, which is just great. Um, you can see that sort of bandolier of grenades for it just attached to the strap, which is just cool. Um, really do like the use again of that green just for the little dials and buttons on the wrists uh, on the forearm of the van brace which is just awesome. And you can see one of the things that I do love about the, the Flesh Terrors color scheme is the fact that the Aquila is in black. So you've got that high contrast on the shoulders, head and backpack, but also on the chest as well. Um, and really works with the rest of the sort of colors and tones on the actual uh, color scheme for the for the chapter. Um, as we move around the back, you can see obviously he's got some extra little bits on him. So he's got a holster and a pistol there, but again, all the little clasps and buttons all fully painted. Um, and again, with the metal work on some of the areas of the miniature, like for example, the exhaust here at the vent, uh, you can see obviously they're all fully painted and highlighted as well along with the rest of the metallics on this miniature so that's just another one of the normal primaris intercessors from the army so the final two units from this flesh terrorist force we have got two plasma toting hell blaster units uh, and these guys do dish out some serious punishment with the weight of shots and damage that they do. So let's jump in and have a look at them. Now, what I really do love is that James has used uh, a green for the plasma, which just works really nicely to sort of contrast and complement the rest of the scheme uh, with that deep maroon armor. Uh, you can see the lovely subtle glow effect that's just been done on that plasma with every single coil highlighted and adding sort of interest with like a lighting effect. So the plasma gl glow is not over the top as well. Um, um, it doesn't look like he's gone to a disco or a party. It's nice and subtle and just insinuates the energy and glow of the weapon. Uh, you can see that this chap has got a full rebreather kind of muzzle mask thing on. Um, and then you've obviously got the uh, the, the blonde hair that's uh, that's iconic for, uh, for, for sort of Sons of Sanguinius. Um, so yeah, if we just move around the back, you can see that massive backpack, the generator backpack for the plasma weapon uh, with all the sort of um, details and things that are on there. And again, every little aspect of it fully painted and fully highlighted to a very high standard. Um, again, you've got the, uh, the relevant uh, sort of chapter symbols and squad markings on the shoulder pads. Um, and again, we've got that iconic flesh terror symbol just added to the other side. So that's one of the hell blasters from the first five man squad. So let's have a look at the other five man hell blaster squad and let's pull forward the sergeant from this squad. I really wanted to show this guy because he's not scared of using plasma at all whatsoever. You can see he probably rolled a one and his arm got blown off, but he's replaced it with a bionic. You can see that lovely green glow effect that's just on both of the plasma weapons. You can see you've got the rifle there that's just sort of slung and just sewed there as he's holding it up. And then you've got the outstretched pistol that undoubtedly is going to vaporize somebody. Um, I do really, really like the use of the green for the plasma. I think it works so well with the armor color scheme and all the little other details on the miniature. Uh, so that's just this awesome other sergeant from the Hellblaster squad.
So to finish up, we're going to have a look at the characters from this Flesh Terrors force. And there are five of them to dive in and have a look at. We've got a lieutenant, we've got a chaplain, we've got two captains in Gravis armor. And we also have an awesome Captain Messinius that's been painted in the color scheme of the Flesh Terrors. A really great model with some intricate little details on it. And we're going to save him until last to have a look at. So let's jump in and let's have a look at the lieutenant to start off with. Really iconic lieutenant model from the Space Marine Primaris range, wielding the sword aloft there in a very classic nod back to a lot of the early second edition models where they had weapons raised. I really do love this lieutenant with that decorative helm that's got the laurel wreath as well. And that's been done in a silver just to contrast, obviously, the uh, the, the rest of the colors on the, on the miniature. You can see, obviously, all the little extra details, for example, or the, the cross guard done in a nice gold and it's really nice that the gold is actually like a warm really bright gold to, to contrast massively against the more darker desaturated armor tones um, and again if you look at some of the things that are hanging off the belt or hanging off the bottom of the sword there's a nice mix of gold tones so it's not all the same which just adds variance to the miniature which is just really nice to see um, as you'll see on the miniature there's there's some purity seals and again they've got that lovely green kind of tone to them that desaturated green which just works really nicely and my favorite point probably from from this force in general and just that's seen on all the power weapons is that lovely bright vibrant green um, power node that you can see there on the power sword along with the lovely metallic kind of tonal work that's been done on the blade so yeah this lieutenant is absolutely awesome and uh, a really good miniature to help lead and command this army so next let's look at the chaplain from the army and uh, again every space marine force needs a chaplain especially flesh terrors when they are absolutely drunk on rage to, uh, to destroy their enemies. And uh, James has done a great job on this model. Uh, again, there's loads of little extra details, like for example, the leather cloth work. You've got the script on the purity seal, which is absolutely exquisite. It's so refined, really well executed. Nice variants to actually details are on there. We've got like an IV kind of like Roman numeric numbers on there, plus loads of actual text as well. Um, but really, really consistently executed across both of those sort of dangling parchments, which are just great. If you have a look at his Crozius, there's some really, really refined work done on all of the sort of grip parts on that all the way through. And again, that use of the saturated green just to really add a lot of contrast to the miniature between the weapons. So if you look at the gun casing, for example, on the Absolver pistol and have a look at the Crozius, really nice use of the red and green to denote those weapons in his hands as well, which is just great. The subtle red glow effect on the faceplate of the chaplain is just really, really great. Like it just helps add a very menacing, insidious kind of like authoritative kind of look to the miniature, which I just think works really nicely. And we can't not talk about the subtle weathering and scratch work done on the leather kind of cloth work that he's got and on the cape. Um, it's just painted really, really nicely. Uh, as we move it around the back here, you'll see there's loads of tonal work on the back of the cape. And then on, on there, you've got loads of scratches and things which just add interest and also tell a story of function and use, which I think is really important with this kind of model. Um, and you've got his book, his naughty book there, as you can see, um, with a green binding on the back of it as well, which is just really nice. And I've just noticed that on the, the other pad on the scroll, you've got the word faith that's been written on there. Very in keeping and fitting for a chaplain, uh, a space marine chaplain. So next we've got two Gravis captains from the army i'm gonna save my favorite to look at secondary and let's jump in and look at the other one first not to take away from the other one because james has still done an exquisite job of painting it but i just prefer a more aggressive attacking pose um, this one really nice as you can see here with that massive bolt rifle um, again hand on the pommel of uh, his sword as well which is just awesome very stoic very fitting for an astartes in sense of pose um, again, you can see every little bit of detail, really, really exquisitely painted uh, and had a lot of attention and time and care put into it. Um, just loads and loads of little things on it, which just really catch the eye and also make you spend ages looking at it. Like, for example, things like the, the little buttons and things that are just on the van brace. Again, all the text on all the purity seals is just done to a super refined finish. Um, you've got that uh, skull symbol showing like a command uh, marking for this miniature as well uh, or for this Space Marine. And uh, again, I do like the use of silver just on little decorations, like, for example, on this just brooch that he's got for his cape. So, yeah, just a really lovely execution across this Primaris captain. So I said I was going to leave the other captain to secondary, and I do really absolutely love the pose on this Gravis captain. Really aggressive, really stoic, uh, commanding pose, just advancing forward, which is what you would want with a flesh terror. Uh, you can see all the facial details right from the get-go have been painted super, super clean with lots of definition showing every little bit of interest. He's got two service studs on his forehead, so you definitely know he's one of the commanders. 
Um, and again, I really love the way that James has used the green accents across sort of like some of the tassels, and the, the, the grip on the sort of massive eviscerator that he's carrying. Um, and even little things like, for example, the brooches with a silver and gold kind of tone on them. Um, just really, really do love all the sort of interest that's been added, even the tiny little transfer on the kneecap, just to add that sort of iconic heraldry of the flesh terrors onto the model. We can't not talk about the, the servo skull, his trusty little friend. You've got the stripes or the hazard chevrons just on that pipe there, which is just really cleanly and sharply defined on that pipe. Um, really difficult to obviously get that looking consistent, and James has done a great job of achieving that on this miniature. Um, you've got some other purity seals and scrolls on here, like the word tear that's just been written on that shoulder guard. Uh, and you can't forget the casings that are just coming out the bolt storm gauntlet there. You can see them just flying out the side in a much more desaturated copper, which is just really nice uh, for this model. Uh, so that's this awesome, aggressive Gravis captain to be one of the command figures of the army. So last to lead this Talon of Blood Flesh Terrors Strike Force, we have got a converted Captain Mycenaeus. A really great uh, captain model, obviously not from the Flesh Terrors chapter that our client has chosen to have converted to lead this force. Um, and James has done a great job of taking off lots of little bits and converting it so that it has got all of the details removed from the previous chapter. Um, he's away on secondment perhaps to another chapter potentially, uh, but this captain has had a lot of work done to just really add that flesh terror kind of look and vibe onto him, as well as obviously just amend the, uh, the actual sculpt and just take off the bits of other lineage. Um, so where to start really? Well, as you can see, all the tassels and things in keeping with the rest of the character models in the force have been painted in that lovely desaturated green. I've got to say it, but the, the, the painting on the face is just done so, so well with all the highlight stages, definition, and also even the service studs picked out individually with multiple highlight stages. We've got a little bit of a um, little bit of sort of freehand added onto the sort of loincloth parchment. You've got a nice checkerboard kind of pattern that's just on there. Um, and again, the knee pad previously had like a hawk on it. That's been removed. And then obviously the flesh terrors transfer has been applied onto there. Uh, one of the things I do really love is obviously just the extra sort of like ornate details that the miniature has or the sculpt has. So you can see the, the winged bit on the underneath of the plasma pistol, which is just awesome. You've got that lovely, rich, vibrant green sort of uh, plasma glow on there as well. Nice and subtle, not too overpowering. Um, the tilt shield that he has normally has some sculpted detail on there of the previous chapter, which has been removed. And then we've got a little bit of freehanded uh, check, checkerboard on there and also a transfer. We've got the word Terra that's been written on the scroll on the Power Fist as well. I do actually like the the, the fact that the sort of the horse with the, the, the rider with the lance has been left on there. I think it's just a quite a nice little detail. It'd be a shame to have that removed, um, but just really nicely executed with that lovely sort of golden cowling that's over the top of the Power Fist. Uh, so that's just absolutely brilliant. Um, the gem on the front shin plate done in a nice rich green as well. Again, using that lovely contrasting color of green to just pick out and denote certain details on the miniature, which is just really clever use of color. If we move around the back, you can see he's almost got his half cape um, just with that lovely golden kind of like uh, key line and aquila in the corner, which is just really nice. Um, you can see the lovely subtle attention to detail on some of the folds and intricacies of the cloth just to add a lot of volume and sort of movement to it, which is just great. And then you can see just the rear of the model where all those sharp armor edge highlights have been done as well. Um, again, to just talk about the basing, I haven't gone over it too much in this uh, in the showcase, but you can see you've got this lovely neutral grayish toned kind of uh, basing with those scattering of green tufts just to really contrast the, the deep maroon of the armor as well. Um, this, this one's obviously got a poor chap uh, who's forgotten his skull on the base. And also we've got some barbed wire on there. So uh, really great model. Nice to see a miniature like this converted and brought to the army of blood. And uh, yeah, do really, really absolutely love it. James has done a phenomenal job on this project. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I do hope you've liked this showcase of this Flesh Terrors army. It's been an absolute honor to show it to you guys. I really, really do not want to see it leave the studio as I do like it ever so much. James has done a great job across all the miniatures in this army. So if you're interested in a commission of your own army, be it a Flesh Terrors one or something different, do not hesitate in going to our website, which is linked in the description of this video. You'll be taken to the contact form. Complete that to get a quote from us for your project. From all the team here and myself at Siege Studios, a massive thank you for watching this video. I'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care.